are we on? Hi, everyone. Welcome to another ShareWise webinar. Today, I am joined by Shimmerick Therapeutics, uh, specifically the CEO, Rebecca, uh, Dr. Rebecca McQuilter. Thank you so much for joining me today, Rebecca. Thank you so much for having me. Um, so for everyone that's joined us in the live webinar today, uh, you have the opportunity to ask Rebecca all your questions. So to do so, please pop your questions into the Q&A box um, in the Zoom toolbar down below and we will get to them. But to get us started, Rebecca, for those that have joined us um, and aren't familiar with the company, could you just give us a brief overview of what the company does, please? Right. Uh, absolutely. So at Chimeric Therapeutics, we're really proud to be bringing cell therapy to life for lots of different cancer patients. And so Chimeric is uh, still in its infancy, only being four years old, founded in 2020 um, and IPO'd soon thereafter. Um, but we basically have a um, broad por portfolio of cell therapies. We have two personalized cell therapies and one off the shelf. Um, the two personalized therapies, we've got um, one for gastric cancers, pancreatic cancer and colorectal cancer, which is very exciting. Uh, our second uh, asset, which is a chlorotoxin for a nasty kind of brain cancer called glioblastoma. And then finally, uh, our off-the-shelf product, which is our core NK platform that will address uh, blood cancer, such as AML. And um, we're also testing it in colorectal cancer patients as well. Okay. And so these um, three assets that you have, so are they all um, already on the market? No, nothing's on the market. So everything at the moment is in phase one. Okay. And we, we have four phase one programs running at the moment. So we have our um, CHM CDH17 phase one program running with our site open in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, that's the first site. Um, and then we have our chlorotoxin program also running in Nashville, Tennessee at Sarah Cannon Cancer Center. And then the two programs for the core and K pro, um, platform, uh, we've got run, one running at MD Anderson um, Cancer Center and the other one running at Case Western. So uh, we're spread all across the US and, and it's my job now being um, the Australian leader um, to bring some trials back to Australia so that Australian patients can take advantage of our great technologies. Okay. Well, we have a lot of questions submitted from um, people attending, so let's dive into it. Um, so the first one is, there are over a 1,000 companies globally involved in CAR-T, including Big Pharma. Why is CHM different? What is the CHM edge that makes it different from others and compelling for investors? Well, the CHM edge firstly starts with the CHM people. So myself uh, as, a, as a newbie being nearly seven weeks in um, and the amazing team that we have based in the US, uh, we've got multiple years of expertise on the team. Um, all of us have led and worked for Big Pharma, uh, bringing parties to market. So we understand the complexities of commercialization, the requirements of, from the FDA and the TGA. Um, so that's the first piece um, that gives us an edge is our amazing team. And the second piece is our novel technology. So uh, we will be the first company in the world to test uh, the target CDH17 uh, in humans in a CAR-T format, uh, which is really exciting. And similarly for chlorotoxin and glioblastoma, we were the first company to do that as well. Now, everybody's got an NK product, but I think what makes ours unique is our um amazing expansion technology so we can really have that commercial viability for the off-the-shelf product for the NK uh, program. So they're kind of four things that set us apart um, from uh, other companies. Okay. Um, and another question is, do you have any interest from potential buyers or partners? So there's always been a lot of interest um, in both our CAR-T programs, and I think we're getting the most interest now around CDH17 and uh, a lot of uh, potential partners are keen to see how we go with the first patient, first visit coming up shortly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, another question is, does your research cover glioblastoma? Yes. Blastomas? 
Glioblastoma, yeah. So that was our lead um, kind of program. So glioblastoma is the nasty brain cancer that I was speaking of. Mm -hmm. And so we've got the phase 1B running at Sarah Cannon in Nashville, Tennessee right now to test um, the efficacy of our chlorotoxin cars in those patients that have the nasty glioblastoma. Okay. Um, would you consider selling 1,101 in order to concentrate funds on 2101 and the next generation NK platforms 2301 and 1301. So my job at the moment is to look about to look at our pipeline. We've got three beautiful assets and the science is stunning. Mm -hmm. The question that, that my chairman's given me to, to answer is, is there commercial viability in either of these assets, right? So for CDH17, it's really, really clear the commercial scalability. For chlorotoxin, there's a bit of a question around that. It's a really tricky procedure. It's very difficult to, um, I guess, inject the cars directly into the brain. And so there's a there's a question mark on that right now. How do we tweak it to make it more commercially viable is, is the task that, that I have right now. And then for the Core NK platform, I think I've mentioned before, this is running really smoothly. We can scale this. This is really easy. So we're definitely looking at all the different options for these three assets to make them as commercially viable as possible. Okay. And speaking of the three assets, right, you mentioned that the company is quite new, only four years. How have you guys achieved so much in these four years already? I mean, it's amazing. And I've only been here for seven weeks, so I can't take any credit. But the team have that expertise in cell therapy. They just know how to do it. They know how to get it done. So to have all three assets all in phase one, it's a huge achievement. They've jumped through multiple FDA hurdles. They've For, for CDH17 in particular, there was a lot of heavy lifting of taking it out of the lab and into a clinical trial process that's fit for manufacturing for humans. And that that that's taken a lot of work. And so I'm really, really proud of the team that we have in place. In particular, my VP of manufacturing, who I wouldn't be able to live without, um, he's sensational and he he can uh, get things done. So very, very proud of the team that we have to have everything in phase one for phase four running, um, which is fantastic for such a young company. Mm. Um, okay. Uh, another question. At this stage, CDH17 uses autologous cells. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance to use the more advanced allogenic genic cells? Yeah, so we actually have an animal model underway uh, looking at adding the CDH17 car onto our Core NK platform. Um, and if you've attended one of my roadshows, you would have seen me present on that. But we should hopefully have an update about that preclinical model shortly, uh, which is really exciting because, again, that commercial scalability is really there if we attach it to the Core NK platform. Uh, so I'm excited to see those results as well. Okay. Uh what makes it difficult to use a CAR T for CHM 1101 compared to the current blood and skin cancer CD19 CAR Ts? Yeah. Why does it require a neurosurgeon? Yeah, so for this particular cancer, the really nasty brain cancer, glioblastoma, what, what the protocol that and, and our amazing team have set up a, a lovely protocol to inject the cars right at the cancer site. Mm -hmm. So when you have a blood cancer, you can in, infuse them into your veins like a normal infusion and the cancer is going to be right there. Yeah. So for uh, a brain cancer, we know that the blood-brain barrier is very protective of the brain. So we want to inject them straight into the into where the cancer is to give them the best chance of teaching the immune system how to fight the cancer. And so you need a neurosurgeon who's capable of doing CAR T cell therapy, which is also narrows the field down. And so, um, but this is really to give the best chance for the cars to engage with the cancer. Um, so very important mechanism there. But the neurosurgeon has to be capable of having this amazing device in two different locations, kind of like this, and then you inject the cards in. Um, so this is not standard practice around the world just yet, and we think it will be in the next few years, but it's sort of an emerging um, uh, procedure, if you like, making it a little bit more difficult. So I did meet someone at Peter Mac last week who can do it, but that's one person for Australia. Um, 
which we need to see one at every hospital in all, all across Australia for it to be commercially viable. So again, another question I have uh, to answer. Mm, okay. Uh, will there be a reshuffle in the company that is a more Australian-based team? Well, I think uh, no. I think it's just me. I mean, I'd love to have some friends here in Australia and we've got six in the US right now, but they're really hands-on, on the ground, managing all of the sites, managing the manufacturing partners that we have and the great relationships we have with some of our partners at MD Anderson Cancer Centre and Sarah Cannon Cancer Centre, also at City of Hope as well and Case Western. We've got a lot of partners in the US, so we really need uh, boots on the ground in the US. Um, I think if we grow um, and we start to see some amazing results coming out of the CDH17 program, you know, the the uh, the world is our oyster, uh, but I think I'd really like to have uh, someone else to help me here on the ground in Australia. That would be lovely. Um, will CHM target other CAR-T or NK therapies outside of oncology, such as autoimmune? Very good question. I think we're always on the lookout for new technology um, and it's, it's important to be horizon scanning at all times for a couple of reasons. We don't want our technology to be superseded quickly, um, but we're also looking for the next best thing. So uh, I think uh, as we move forward towards the end of the year, it'll be appropriate to look at all different technologies um, to see what indications they have. I mean, my background, um, I've got a PhD in cell therapy, so I'm always on the lookout. I've got lots of friends who are doing some really great work here in Australia. Um, and so we're always on the lookout for new assets. Um, okay. Um, and then we have someone that uh, wants to uh, get an update on when to expect data on, I think, a lot of um, the activities. So the first one is CHM 1101, the phase 1B dose confirmation trial. So um, because of the challenges that we've seen with the administration for um, CHM chlorotoxin program, uh, we probably won't see those until the second half of this year, maybe towards the back end of the year, uh, if we're lucky with those ones. So uh, I'll ask for your patience with those results. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so I assume that's, um, is that the same for 1301 in vivo? Uh so I think uh, 1301 in vivo is the preclinical model. I've, I get confused with all the numbers still coming up to speed, um, but we should also see those at the back end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have a question to do with phase one mm -hmm. of 1101. Mm -hmm. uh, it says COH second site is not recruiting. Why? That's a very good question. Let me find out for you. Okay. <laughs> Um, what is CHM's cash burn rate and cash on hand? So as of March 31, we had just under 10 million in the bank. And I think when you have four phase ones running, the cash burn rate is going to be really high. And I think that alarms a few people. But if you understand the technology and you understand the process of manufacturing a cell therapy, this definitely, um, makes complete sense. When you manufacture a CAR-T, you're basically paying someone uh, to white glove this person's cells, to handle them every day for 20 days, to check that they're okay, to check that they're happy, and this comes with a big price tag. But that's what we need to be safe, to make sure that the, the cars are well engineered and to make sure we comply with the FDA and TGA requirements that we need to, to complete the safety and efficacy of the phase one requirements. So I'm very comfortable with our cash burn, but happy happy to take more questions on that. Uh, and you're very welcome to pop into a lab and, and see how they do it down at Cell Therapies at Peter Mac because uh, it's quite a labor intensive process. It's 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 a, it's completely different to creating a monoclonal antibody, for example, which is a lot cheaper. But our technology wouldn't be that good if we weren't doing it like this. So very comfortable with the cash burn rate. Okay. Um, what was Rebecca's experience experience prior to recently joining the company? So my experience is 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 vast. So as I mentioned, I have a PhD in cell therapy from Monash University here in Melbourne. 
and I quickly joined industry uh, after I finished uh, my PhD because uh, the academic life really wasn't for me. And I've worked um, here in Australia and in the US uh, for some big pharma companies, GlaxoSmithKline, Amgen, and notably Amgen in the US, uh, running a big $8 billion oncology business. We had 1,200 reps on the ground. And I can't tell you how busy my job was uh, being the strategic assistant for the GM of US Oncology at Amgen. But it was really great to spend time working in America, understanding how different the cultures are and um, really appreciating the way that they do business in the US. And then we came home to um, back to Australia and um, I was fortunate enough to be part of a spin-out called Bioveritive uh, mm -hmm. and we built that business from zero uh, to a $20 million business. We had profit, which was lovely, $20 million profit. And then we were acquired by Sanofi, uh, which was really positive. So I think we entered in at 40 or 50 cents and, and tripled our money at the end, which was great. So um, then after uh, a little bit of time at, at uh, Sanofi doing all the handover, I was poached by Novartis Australia. And my role at Novartis Australia was very interesting, and I'm really happy to share um, two big things that I did at Novartis Australia, which will hopefully give you some confidence in the way that I'm thinking about approaching Chimeric. But I did two very large partnerships um, at Novartis, and the first one was with Telstra. Now, I don't know if you've ever encountered working with Telstra or even calling them. It's a very hard job, um, but I'm very proud of our partnership. And that was really centered around health data in Australia and working with the federal government in Canberra to make sure that we have a clear picture of what's going on in Australia right now. The other partnership that I led uh, at Novartis Australia was a partnership with West Farmers. And so you may have seen recently in the news, you could go to the football, you can go to Bunnings and get your cholesterol and heart health checked. Well, that idea was mine. I'm very proud of that idea. Um, and now it's been picked up by the Shane Warne Legacy Foundation and it's now been rebranded as the Shane Warne um, Heart Health Check. And so I'm so proud uh, to have been uh, led that partnership with West Farmers um, and really, really looking forward to applying some of that different thinking to Chimeric and thinking about how can we get some different partners, how can we get some different investors and how can we really elevate um cell therapy uh, once again to be where it was a few years ago. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> um, and I guess relating to that, how do you feel being a minority leader considering only 7% of CEOs are female? Yeah, so I have thought about this a little bit more than the first time when I asked this question. And I think um, it's something that needs to be acknowledged. I've got a great uh, supportive family network around me that allows me to do this job and I can travel as much as I need to. Um, our share price is on the fridge. So my kids know exactly if mum's doing a good job. <laughs> But I think it's really important because it doesn't matter about gender, whether you can lead a company or not. We're here for results. We're here to make sure patients are safe. We're here to close these trials and get into phase two. So I'm really determined to use all the experience that I've had, my background in cell therapy, to make sure that we're successful. Um, and, you know, my family are counting on it as well as your families. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, I think we'll end it here. Um, thank you so much for everyone that's joined us. This recording will be put onto YouTube. Um, but thank you so much, Rebecca, for your time. Thank you so much for having me.